This is the OnePlus 12R. It's the first time we're seeing the company's value flagship here in the US. And with that, here are five reasons why I think this is a serious contender for phone of the year. Let's jump right in. Like him or hate him, OnePlus is trying harder than ever to make waves in the US smartphone space. Yeah, they're basically making westernized versions of Oppo devices, but in my opinion, none of that really matters in the practical sense of making a good product. Let's be real, if these phones work well, then who cares what it is? But especially when it comes to the OnePlus 12R, there's a lot to love here. As someone that romanticizes the very existence of these products, products a lot, especially when writing up these videos, I've come to the realization that the 12R actually offers a lot of what fans and enthusiasts want out of a quote unquote good OnePlus phone. But what exactly does that even mean? Well, we can certainly start with some of the simple things. This 12R has the all too important alert slider that's characteristic of most OnePlus phones, which lets us toggle between ring, vibrate, and silent all without having to take our phone out of our pocket. Plus, it's also ridiculously tactile and it just sounds cool as well. But what's also core to OnePlus's identity is the software experience, which is of course Oxygen OS on top of Android. We've already covered this at length on this channel already, but there are tons of OnePlus purists out there that hate the idea of current Oxygen OS because it's loosely based on Oppo's Color OS. I will agree that it is quite a far cry from the original, lean, nearly stock Android experience that we had on OnePlus's back in the day. But honestly, I've been really liking how the OnePlus team have retooled and simplified Color OS to make it their own, and it's become one of the slickest Android experiences that I've ever used. Bottom line, the 12R goes back to basics with one of OnePlus's biggest mantras, offer flagship performance without the flagship price. Here in the United States, the OnePlus 12R retails for 500 bucks. And on top of that, you can also get $100 trade-in credit as well if you give them any phone in any condition. While I haven't really tried this process out personally since they send these products out for review, they claim you can send in basically anything from that old iPhone collecting dust in your drawer to a scrap Moto G that's seen both fire and brimstone. If you ask me, that's a pretty solid deal. And so for $400 with an asterisk attached, what exactly do you get? To round it all up, the 12R nails a premium feel in the hands, an insanely bright, high quality display, larger than life battery, a decent camera, and a flagship SoC, albeit from last year. That's the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which in the time that I've been testing this phone still punches well above its price tag, even if you are a heavy user. I'll dive deeper into this a little later, but compared to other premium-ish smartphones that also deliver last-gen flagship performance, you know, options like the $800 base iPhone 15 or the $700 Pixel 8, and especially the $600 Galaxy S23 FE and nothing phone 2, the OnePlus 12R takes a way more aggressive approach than those other devices, and I like that a lot. Something interesting about testing out the OnePlus 12R is that right now, it is a very weird time for me to make a video on this. And that's because I am also currently playing with the standard OnePlus 12, as well as the Galaxy S24 Ultra and iPhone 15 Pro Max back to back, which in some ways actually does favors for the 12R in showing how good the value is, but also you better bet that it amplifies where the company had to make compromises. You certainly see it while doing comparisons with synthetic benchmarks, which on paper reads about a 20% difference in year-over-year -year performance between the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 and 8 Gen 3. However, practically speaking, in the real world, this compromise actually makes a whole lot of sense. In my own testing, the performance honestly doesn't feel that much faster on the newer chips 
compared to the OnePlus 12R. And considering that a lot of those flagship phones can cost almost double the price, it starts to make you wonder how much performance you actually need. OnePlus does attribute part of this perceived speed and fluidity to optimization work that they've done in conjunction with Qualcomm themselves. But really, let's not kid ourselves here. One generation is almost always not enough time to feel significant performance gains. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 inside of this OnePlus 12R will play your Genshin impacts at 60 FPS, It'll keep plenty of apps open with the standard 8 gigs of RAM on board and even has beefy cooling in it to keep the internal and surface temps down, just like any other ordinary flagship these days. And again, you can actually buy this phone for anywhere between 400 and 500 bucks, which is absolutely a win here for OnePlus, especially in the United States. It is unheard of. Outside the scope of performance, you don't even feel the compromise as much in places like the camera department. Now, I'm not gonna kid you, there's obviously better colors, detail and dynamic range on more expensive phones. But again, these are usually twice the price. And I'd argue in the case of the 12R, they're probably not twice as good either. It'll certainly work for the vast majority of people out there. And that's kind of the point. My fourth reason why is the screen. OnePlus pulled out all of the stops to maximize the quality of the display here on the 12R, which is something that you can really see comparing it side by side with its bigger brother, the flagship OnePlus 12. Part of what makes that device in particular a premium phone is the 2K OLED display that peaks at a whopping 4,500 nits brightness when in hard sunlight. It looks seriously good, especially while watching content. But going back to our OnePlus 12R here, it's kind of surprising to see how much of what makes the 12 screen so good make it over to the cheaper phone. Now it does have a lower native resolution at 1.5K, but it still retains that 120 Hertz refresh rate and even the 4,500 nit peak brightness when outside. And while I can't scientifically test that, it's absolutely easy to read and view while touching grass, which is all I can really ask for. Unless you are really A-B comparing with a higher end flagship phone, this screen is legit legitimately good. And last but not least, an aspect that makes the OnePlus 12R a proper mid-range device and also helps it to beat a lot of flagships out there is the fact that it has insane battery life. I'll start with this. It's kind of a shame that OnePlus doesn't include wireless charging in the 12R, but where the charging coil would have been, they added extra capacity. It's actually rated for 5,500 milliamp hours, which is certainly larger than most of the phones that I've tested tested in the past year. And what that translates to in the real world is about two days of on and off moderate use, which is seriously good. Again, it is a bit of a shame that you lose out on a bit of convenience by not having a Qi coil on the back of the 12R. And especially since OnePlus offers fast Qi charging on the standard OnePlus 12, but the saving grace here is that they have an 80 watt charger included in the box to take advantage of SuperVOOC, which will take the battery from zero to 100% in about 31 minutes. And that is seriously impressive. All in all, there is a lot to love with the OnePlus 12R. I think they absolutely nailed the price to performance on here, especially if you can knock off that hundred bucks to make this a $400 phone. It seriously is a flagship killer, especially if you compare it to options like the Galaxy S24 and iPhone 15 Pro Max that can cost more than double the price. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And otherwise, thanks for watching this video on Denki Channel.